Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part 7 of the processing tutorial. Uh, if you remember from last lesson, what we did was we got a ball bouncing back and forth across the screen. So I got this little red ball with a green outline. I did that with the fill and stroke and stroke weight. And it bounces back and forth. And it moves using this variable x delta. And this variable x delta just says how much each time I go through the draw loop I'm going to move in the x direction. So it starts off at positive 2, which means it goes in this direction, bounces off this wall, and then when it hits that wall, it reverses direction and goes back. All right, so it's just going to flip the sign each time it hits a wall. And it flips the sign because of this if statement. And this if statement, what it does is it checks if I've gone off the screen this way or actually past my boundary 490 if I go past 490 it'll flip the the sign if I go if the middle of my ellipse is less than 10 it'll also flip the sign and each time it flips the sign when I come back up here I'm then adding and going in a different direction all right so that's that's what the if statement down here does and you remember this keyword the keyword actually is set when you run the size function. So you need the size function in order to use the, the width. Okay, so that's really about all we did last time, but just bouncing a ball back and forth is kind of boring. So what we want to do is we want to we want to get it bouncing all over the screen kind of randomly. Uh, so we're going to we're going to elaborate a little bit on if statements first just so we know how to use them better. All right. In this if statement, though, we had an or, and we talked about greater than or, or less than. But there's a lot more you can do with it. Uh, you'll also hear different terminology aside from if statement. You might hear a Boolean expression or Boolean statement, or you might hear conditional statement or conditionals. Uh, what that is is this right here is a Boolean expression. And it's a Boolean expression because it's something that can be true or false. It evaluates to true or false. This is another Boolean expression. And in fact, this whole thing creates one Boolean expression, this whole if statement. Because if this is true and this is true, then the if statement is true. Because it's either true or false, okay, or true. If this is true and this is false, then this whole thing is true. If this is false and this is true, this whole thing is true. The only way that x is not going, delta is not going to flip, is when we're in the middle of our screen, when we're here, and x is not greater than 490, and x is not less than 10, which makes this expression false and this expression false. So that means this won't flip. Okay, makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, we're doing some practice right now. All right. So here are three variables. Uh, you can follow along with this code or you can copy it into a new project. I made a new project called if statements uh, just so I could run this. And what we have here is we have these, these are all the operators, the comparison operators we can use. We have greater than, less than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, equal to, not equal to, and a not operator. And this one is probably the weirdest, this not operator. It's something that will take a little while to get used to, but these others, they make sense. All right, so let's look at this, what I have here. I have if x is equal to 10, print line here. So x is equal to 10. So if I run this, it'll say here at the bottom. All right, so what if I want to say if it's anything but 10? So if x is not equal to 10, print. Now in this case, this Boolean expression evaluates to false because x is equal to 10, but I'm saying if x is not equal to 10, then print all this stuff. Okay? I could also say if x is less than 10, and if x is less than or equal to 10, then it will print, and that's true. Okay? So for this statement, I can make a lot of things true. I can't make x greater than 10 because x is 10 so it can't be greater than uh, let's go back to the equal sign here uh, what I did show you last time was the or operator so this is what you saw when we did the bouncing ball and I can say if y is 16 now y is not 16 but x is still 10 so that means oh I gotta 
made a small mistake there. Uh, so then it will print this because while this is false, this by this is true rather, this is false, which means true or false evaluates to true. Now for those of you that have taken some type of logic class or you understand truth tables, that'll make sense. But really, it's just going to evaluate in this case if one or the other is true. All right, so let's play around with these a little bit. Uh, you can also extend this even further. You could say, or z is equal to 21. And I keep doing that. There we go. Z is equal to 21. And it will still print. So let's say if this is false now, let's may I say x is equal to 0 it's still going to print because z is equal to 21. So I could have a hundred false expressions and one true expression and as long as there's an, they're all ORed together it'll still print this line. Alright, now there's other, there's other things and I'm going to just delete these ones to make it a little more simple or one of these here. And if we have OR that means we probably have AND. So in this case z is equal to 21 but x is not equal to, to 0. So if I run this it's not going to print because to make this statement true this and this both need to be true. So to do that I might have to make this 10 and now it'll print here. All right. So that works pretty well. Well what if we want to say something like if x is less than 10 then print here but otherwise I want you to do something different so in this case maybe let's say I want to print I don't know uh, print there okay so I print there so in this case it's gonna evaluate this and it will say well X is not less than 10 so that's false but it will notice that there's an else statement attached to this and then it will it will evaluate this one and else will always work if everything above it is false so this is going to now print out there because it says if this is false then do this all right so not bad uh, we also have else if statements which then we can do more evaluations we can say something like if y is greater than three or two uh, then print, I don't know, uh, where. Okay. So it's going to print out where, but you notice it no longer prints out there. And the reason is, is because when an if statement has an if, else, or if, else, if, else block, so this whole block of if statements, it's only going to do one of them. So only one thing gets run. So only one, uh, scope or one uh, set of brackets the code in there gets run so if this is false but this is true then this runs and then it will skip over this and come down here and keep running code okay uh, you can also have multiple else if statements you could have you can really have as many as you want uh, you don't want too many things can get really ugly when you have a lot of if statements um, here where there um, I don't know, over there. Okay, so now it's going to print out where because y is still bigger than 2. But if I put 20 in here, okay, now it prints out over there because z is larger than 2. All right, so these kind of make sense. Uh, all of this stuff is, it's pretty logical. When you get some more complicated if statements going on, things can be a little bit difficult to figure out what's going on, but you'll get used to it. Now, these operators here at the start, they all kind of make sense. I can say things like if x is not equal to 10, and that makes sense. This other operator, though, this not operator all by itself is a little bit weird. Uh, so let's take a look at an example, and let's go back to our original x equals 10. So if I run this, it's going to just print out here because x equals to 10. And this, that means this statement evaluates to true. Now, if I want to negate that, or I want to make it the opposite, use the not operator, I put this in front of it, and it will no longer print, okay? Because that means if this evaluates to true, this flips it to false, so now it's saying if 
and this evaluates to false, so that means this won't run. But if I did this, it will print it out because this says x is not equal to 10. Well, that's a false statement because x is equal to 10. But then I flip it out here, whatever this is, so I make it the opposite. So the opposite of false is true, which makes this if statement true, which means it prints out here. All right, so a little bit weird, right? Uh, the not operator will come in handy a lot of times. It does come in uh, a lot more when you start using functions and looking at the return value of functions, uh, checking the, the not value of those. All right, so that's kind of if statements. That's just a, a rundown. You're gonna be using them from here on out, so you'll get a lot more practice with them, but you can always come back to this and, and revise. All right, so let's go back to our code. And we said that we wanted to get the ball moving in other directions. And we actually did that in one lesson. And we did that by using this y value here and then adding on to the y value. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to space these out a little bit. And I'm going to make a y delta. I'm going to make y delta equal to 2, just like my x delta. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So y equals y plus my hands are kind of cold in that not moving too well so y equals y plus delta so if I run this this is gonna come straight down and notice how it hit this wall and then bounced off and went that way but we want it to also bounce off the bottom of the screen and the top of the screen so let's let's do that uh, all we really need is another if statement so we take our if statement and we're going to say if y and it needs to be greater than the bottom of the screen and the bottom of the screen is the height so height minus 10 okay or y is less than 10 then all you need to do is the same thing y delta equals minus y delta so that was pretty easy, right? So this is just going to get our ball bouncing. And let's see what it does. Now, since I, I sent it off at, at this angle, it's going to bounce straight into my corners. Uh, so let's, let's switch this up a little bit so we can see it bouncing around a little bit differently here. So I'll maybe make this 150 or something. And that'll send the ball off so it, it bounces off these corners here. All right. Now, if you want to see something a little more interesting, you can go ahead and comment out this background. Now, comments are something we haven't really talked about. I did, I had it in the other, the, the if statement thing, I had it right here with these. Uh, what it is is just two lines, two slashes, and these two slashes will comment out a single line. And that means this code will not run, and in processing it'll go gray. So if I comment out my background, and I run this, you'll now see I have a tracer for my ball. Okay. The unfortunate thing is my background is no longer black, but if I want to keep it black, I can do this. Background up here, and then I'll set the background one time. So I'm going to make this maybe 75 and 75 now, just so I can get some more interesting bouncing going on. All right, so we can watch the tracer of my ball going around and it looks like it's it's only slightly off here uh, maybe we can get something a little more interesting 250 and maybe let's move this at one and the other at two so you can kind of play with this and you can get the ball bouncing however you want uh, the ball will bounce just fine off just about anything so right now I've got a I got a much better meta tracer going on here it looks like is it gonna come back yeah, there we go. You notice because there's no random element in this, it's gonna gonna find a pattern and it's gonna just keep following that pattern. And we're gonna fix that later on. Uh, but right now, we'll just let it let it follow these patterns. And I encourage you to play with these x values and the delta values, and try to get something a little bit different, uh, different patterns going on, different different bouncing around. Just kind of play with it that way. All right. Uh, so next lesson, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put more balls on the screen and just a few more balls and then the lesson after that I'm going to show you how, how to put as many as you want on and we'll have lots of things bouncing around and then we'll be set to actually make 
a little game, just a little clicking game to pop bubbles and stuff like that, or pop the balls, whatever you want to call them. All right, so thanks for following along, and I hope to see you in Lesson 8.